Welcome to Talk Tennis. We're here in person debuting the brand new podcast situation for Tennis Warehouse. This is very exciting. Thanks for joining me, Tiffany, Troy, and Chris. Hi. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Hey. We're very excited. Oh, man. <laughs> Troy's already breaking Mic drop. Me. Phone drop. <laughs> Phone drop. <laughs> We're very excited moving forward into the year. We're going to have so many more of these deep dives. We're going to be able to bring in your favorite play testers and people in the building and Zoom people in. And just it's going to be a whole new experience. So it's very exciting. We're legit. We're finally <laughs> legit. We are legit. We've made it. Joe Rogan can call us for a collab. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Um, today we're going to talk about the Yonex Percept rackets. There's a lot of them, and I know you all have tested many of them. But before, I've got a little icebreaker, as always. We are in the middle of the U.S. Open right now, and tennis seems to be very exciting. So I'm going to ask you either what's the most exciting thing about tennis right now for you, or who's the most exciting player? It doesn't have to be your favorite player, but who's like really getting you stoked on tennis? Tiff, we'll start with you. Oh, I don't know. I have a two. Well, because Coco just got to work and made it a quick one. And also last night watching Ben Shelton over Tiafo, no fear. Yeah. 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 And hitting big. So yeah. big. So pretty exciting then. Yeah. Troy, who you got? You always yeah. have a fun answer. I feel like most people have to go with like Ben Shelton. Like the fact that he's serving 149 miles an hour. And then like the guy's just like big and like just solid muscle and like just so explosive. You yeah. Know? And he's got that like young, like college tennis attitude where he's just like going off. I think that, I think him. And then also watching him um, in the mixed doubles with Taylor Townsend. That's pretty fun to watch. So right. I think that's pretty cool right now. Nice. Yeah. Chris, you got to go to the US Open. I did. Yeah. I saw one match. Well, I was, <laughs> I was potentially going to see two matches, but Iga won her first round like 0 1, so I kind of missed it. <laughs> I think I saw them shake hands, and that was about it. Um, and then I saw uh, Tiafos actually play in his first round match. So he played um, Lerner Tien. Um, young guy, very talented, so I expect to see good things coming from him in the future. But I can't believe we're not all talking about how Dan Evans took a set <laughs> off of Alcaraz. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> He's still um, out there. <laughs> That's funny. I wonder how many backhand slices he hit in that Oh, there was set. a lot. I watched that match. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of slicing going on. Yeah. <laughs> I remember watching it on TV. Unfortunately, wasn't there for that one. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say, I feel like American tennis is in good hands and we're seeing a lot of good Americans. Jen Brady is still in doubles with one of our Team Tita players, Louisa. Louisa. So that's been exciting also. And it will be fun to see. Obviously, this episode will come out once we know the result. But as of right now, we're like in the semis. Lots of cool stuff happening. Sabalenka on the women's side is looking pretty, pretty dominant Dangerous. right now. Yeah. We'll, see we'll see what it comes down and to. Maddie Keys, is she still in? I think yeah. she's still in. Yeah, so she's been playing great. So. Who'd, who'd she take out pretty easily? Pagula? Pagula, yeah. yeah. yeah lots of Amer- and then Coco and Jess are still in doubles also. It's, yeah, lots of Americans. We're doing things. <laughs> yes. Okay, well, we can kind of transition from there into the percepts. We actually saw Francis Tiafo sporting the Percept paint job for a minute, but has gone back to his V-Core paint job. Um, Let's start from the top. What is the newest technology that makes these rackets different from previous Yonex rackets or other Yonex rackets in the family, in the different, in the massive Yonex family? How is it different than E-Zone, V-Core? Troy, I'm gonna start with you. You're always our very detailed guy. Yeah, the main the main technology that they really were sort of talking about when they introduced the line was the servo filter. Yeah. <laughs> um, which, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they've had like in the previous versions the vibration dampening mesh. They've done that in a lot of rackets. The NAMD, right, or something is called. Yeah, the NAMD yeah. squared mm-hmm. and all that stuff. But uh, basically, what I got from the servo filter is that um, it really makes or enhances like the the feel overall uh, kind of like a smoother cleaner feel um they're really trying to cut out what a lot of what a lot of these dampening technologies try to do is cut out the bad vibrations the shock the unwanted stuff but still give you enough um, or sort of filter and give you enough feedback and connection to the ball so um not to say that this percept is crazy different than maybe the previous v core pro but with that technology i think it was something that was noticeable and uh 
I think the the three ninety seven head sizes, the ones that I really was hitting a lot, it it really they're really nice filling rackets overall. So yeah, there's definitely a difference in playability going if you've hit previous versions of V Core Pros or previous ninety seven Yonixes compared to these. Um, these ones just felt more solid for me. So the uh, not quite as whippy, maybe not um, not as much feedback. I wasn't feeling the ball as much, but the more I hit them, the more I really got dialed into the new feel on those ones. And just the forgiveness, the stability was the big improvement for me. And especially up at net, I like to finish. I can't hit the ball hard enough on <laughs> the baseline to finish points. So I hit drop shots and then I come in and try and put away volleys. And on uh, the net, man, they were really clean feeling, really solid. And I thought great volleying rackets. So yeah, enjoyed it. Nice. And then I'm going to ask you guys which rackets you play tested, which was your favorite and which and if you would make any changes and then which was your least favorite and maybe why. So, Tiffany, I think you had a racket that was potentially close to your racket of choice that you got to test. Yeah, um, it's the new one in the line. It's the D 100 D. I didn't test any of the 97s. 97s a little getting small. <laughs> I like the 100. <laughs> Give me the more area to hit um, and it lines up pretty closely to my prince uh, the, the 100p i mean it's a 305 gram unstrung tighter string pad and it, the 100d is an 1819 mm -hmm. uh, mine's an 1820 uh, so very similar so i was very excited to get out there and try that one and i also tested the other 100 in line the um the, mo the, the traditional string pattern that we've seen from them the 16 by 19 and it's a 300 gram racket you already want to know which one's my favorite? Yeah. <laughs> you know, when I, I do. It's funny. It's when I, I thought immediately I would gel with that 100 deep, but um, it took me a few hitting sessions and it took me a while to figure out how to best play with it. I don't know if it's because I'm used to testing the more powerful 100s that I get in this habit of sitting back and just playing more defensively because I can sit back behind the baseline and just rally and move my opponent that way. And it wasn't so successful for me with the 100D. It did require me to figure out that I needed to be more aggressive, step in, take the ball early. It does come around pretty quick for a 305 gram racket. I think Yonex often makes 305 gram rackets that are very accessible to the to, to someone like me, intermediate level player. And um, just take the ball early, come in and close it out at the net. Not usually my typical way of playing, but I found a lot of success that way. And so in that sense, at the end, I really enjoyed that racket. But for the way I've been playing, the 100 was actually my favorite because I could play farther back more easily. I was getting that easier depth. So when I did need to transition from the backcourt and be a little bit more offensive, I, it was a little bit easier for me just because the standard 100 was giving me that easier depth mm -hmm. from the baseline. Troy has a theory. What? Which one? Which one? <laughs> on the hundred D and Tiffany. Uh, I haven't oh. heard this one. I gotta hear it. He's like, wait a minute, I got many theories. Which yeah, I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah, right. This might not be good. Um, no, no, we were talking about that. Because I as soon as the I remember the day that we were introduced to the line and I think uh, we were in there for the, the meeting with Yonex, but you weren't in it that day. Um, and I came out and I was like, oh, Tiff, did you hear about this new person, this new racket that they're bringing out, the 100 square inch flat beam, 18 by 19. So it was like, it was almost like we were like, I was trying to like set you up for like the perfect match. It was, gonna be like, it was like a that. match made yeah. in heaven. And then, and then it wasn't. When you got to the date, it was like, maybe less than stellar you know maybe it wasn't the perfect match you he know? didn't have the personality <laughs> yeah. that you were looking for <laughs> and wanted I was, to i was trying to match make but he, he didn't offer to pay <laughs> didn't quite you know on paper but then that's reality yeah. <laughs> yeah. i think he was just a little more demanding than i expected i mean mine is very similar on paper yeah. i think the 100p just gives me a little bit freer power I def definitely figured out how to i best played with the 100d and enjoyed it mm -hmm. but sometimes i just need that extra Getting a little older, I want that freedom or the f them to help me, the racket to help me out a little bit more. No, yeah, with sense. the 100, like a better balance of the the offense to defense or defense mm -hmm. to offense type thing. Yeah. I get what you're saying there. Well, and we're going to talk about this in a bit, but what other rackets it kind of lines up with from other brands. And this line is definitely more control oriented than power oriented. So that makes sense. Yeah, that 100D is actually pretty close to the Speed Pro that I use. So it was easy. That ended up being my favorite out of all the press-ups. I didn't hit the 100 very much because that was the only playtest I wasn't on. 
but the 100D, the more I played with it, the more I got dialed in with that one and it ended up kind of being my favorite, um, followed pr pretty closely by the 97. But those were the two I could be the most creative with. I could get around the ball, get the spin I wanted, hit my lobs, hit my angles, things like that. And then just a denser pattern of the, the 100D is better for me on drop shots and slices and stuff like that. So yeah, it ended up being my, my favorite. So it wasn't Tiff's match maybe. But maybe. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, how do you find the 97D to compare to the 100D? So the 97D, the sample I was hitting was really heavy and it was really close to the H and um, it was just like, man, I'm working a lot with this racket. Uh, I did like it on serve, came through nicely on serve. I really struggled. I usually like heavy rackets on serve, but the H was just, I struggled everywhere with that thing, um, which is weird because I don't with heavier rackets than that. You know, rackets with either higher swing weights or higher static weights so somehow rotate better. Um, but that one, something about it just wasn't gelling with me, but the, um, the response of the string bed was good. It was controlled out of the 97D. Um, tons of plow through and when I was lined up my back end top spin down the line was working really really well but just uh yeah a little bit too much racket you know for me to get it around the ball quickly and I felt like with that with the 97d and the h I was hitting straight I wasn't able to like shape the ball everything just went straight so I like to you know be creative and I felt kind of a little handcuffed yeah, <laughs> yeah. With, with those two Troy which ones did you test and what was your favorite? Yeah, I spent a lot of time with all three of the 97 uh, head sizes. Um, and I will kind of pick up where Chris left off. There was times, depending on the hitter that we had and maybe the swing weight spec, because, you know, they will fluctuate a little bit. There was times where um, the maneuverability factor, usually it would be a bigger gap for me between the D and the H, the 320 and the 330, but there was times where they almost swung the same because of the swing weights being pretty close. I think in stock spec, the weight, the swing weight, the D is really almost perfect. Like it just feels like an extension of my arm. But there was times, like especially the day that we shot the video where the 1820 pattern, I was wanting just a little more grab um, and a little more bite that I get from the open pattern of the, the regular 97 or the, the 330, the H. Mm -hmm. um, so I think in the end, once I got used to the 330 again, I hadn't played with that kind of spec in a little while. Um, I really think that's my my favorite of the bunch. And a couple of our, our hitters or the, the swing weight on that H was right pretty close to 330. I yeah. think once it starts getting closer to the mid to high 330s, closer to 340, it's like, oh, damn, this thing is a beast, like kind of like the RF. Um, but the 330 or the 97 H with the, with the swing weight close to that 330 mark. I think that's pretty much dialed and the one I'd go with because it's just so uh, in stock form with all that mass in there up at net from the baseline. It's just like you don't get bullied. You don't get pushed mm -hmm. around. It's got that like that solid just mm -hmm. plush feel. So I think I'd have to tail weight them, you know, just to yeah. get the tip to come around a little quicker. Mm -hmm. um, it just felt like those all that mass was kind of really central on the racket and it just wouldn't rotate. Yeah. Me. And then as you were talking about the the. D kind of feeling heavy for the spec. Mm -hmm. I almost kind of wonder, in like in a dream world, what the the ninety seven three ten would be like with an eighteen twenty pattern, because mm. it has that whippiness. <laughs> yeah, and, you yeah. know, that would be kind of fun mm -hmm. to try. But like, yeah, the three the ninety seven D spec I think is perfect. Like, feels like an extension of my arm. But I would I wish I could try that with the with the more open sixteen nineteen. That makes sense. Yeah, and then I was gonna ask you guys because. For me, the biggest change from maybe trying a V-Core Pro 97H, I thought this 97H was more approachable because previously they've been very demanding rackets for me. And I do like the RF, but like for whatever reason, I just couldn't swing that one successfully. Did you guys notice any, like if you had played with a V-Core Pro and now you're trying to percept, was there any noticeable change? Was the feel better? For me, I think there was like stability was better. Mm -hmm. um, the rackets felt more forgiving. <clears throat> so I think that, you know, speaks to that accessibility a little bit there. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, I was getting to net as much as I could with them just because I, I thought they all were great up there. And on the volley, you could be a little off center and still get the ball kind of where you wanted to go is close enough to the target. You still get enough pop on the volley to get the job done. So, um, yeah, I think that aspect of the stability and just that forgiveness from you know a little bigger sweet spot maybe were, were the takeaways for me mm -hmm. yeah i definitely noticed that on the uh the h 
I like the previous the uh, V-Core Pro 97H, um, but with this one, I felt like the sweet spot was a little bigger. Maybe it was a little bit, you know, dampened or muted at times, but I got used to that feel, and I thought it was a little more forgiving. And then with the other two models, the 97310 and the D, the main takeaway I noticed, because I remember trying the, the 97310 with the previous V-Core Pro, and I just I couldn't find my groove. And I got a little bit more energy return. I felt, I felt like the ball was coming off the string bed, mm -hmm. a little more pace, a little hotter, and I got easier depth. And that was probably the biggest thing I noticed is like, I really liked that improvement and it just felt like I was getting a little more, a little more um, zip on the ball. Nice. Tiff, did you notice any big changes between maybe a V-Core Pro and a Percept? I think for me, I, I tested a lot of the V-Core Pro 100s and always on the potential, maybe I'm going to switch because I really liked that. 100 square inch control, a little more control than power um, aspect of the V-Core Pros. But the one thing that always, I think when I would hit it side by side by mine is that they felt a little, not quite as stable. And I, I think I always attributed to the 100 being five grams lighter and, and unstrung than my own racket. Uh, I think that the stability, and I don't know if it's a servo filter or whatever it is, I just did feel like I didn't notice as many of those vibrations when I was hitting off center. It felt a little bit more stable than those pre the previous the, the V Core Pros, mm -hmm. and the 100D is brand new, but that yeah. one felt really solid. Nice. Uh, string setups are always a good question, and since we have some tighter string patterns, some more open string patterns in this family, were there any string setups? And we were lucky enough to have several different rackets for these play tests, so we could all kind of customize to what we want, or at least try some of our favorite strings. Did you guys have a string that stood out in your mind that worked better than others? I know Yonex has the minty green matching string for this one, but... A Troy, what do you like in there? And especially, like, what do you like in a tighter, the tighter perceps versus the more open ones? Yeah, we hit them a lot with the Polytor Pro. That's kind of like a go-to when we first get Yonex playtest rackets. And I like that string a lot. I really liked it in the open patterns, the 97 and the H. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like it gives you good pocketing. Once it kind of settles in, you get good, uh, a little bit of energy return for a poly. It's comfortable. Um, but there was times where I struggled with it on the D. Because the Polytor Pro is a round shape poly, and I just uh, sometimes I just wanted a little more grab, a mm -hmm. little more grip. Um, so for me, with the D, I definitely would be going with a shape poly, whether that's like the uh, the Polytor Rev, um, something like that would be really nice, or even like a thinner gauge of like a Hyper G or a Torbite, um, probably like a 1.20 millimeter in that that eight, the 18 by 20 and just something really nice and sharp is what I'd go with those. But but the two open patterns, I mean, I could try, a, there's a lot of different strings that work well for me in those. For me, like in that 100D, you know, there's a saying in fashion, blue and green should not be seen you know, <laughs> without something else in between. But I would probably put Polytor Air in it. Um, just because that string helps shape the ball a lot, you can really get a nice launch angle out of it. Especially a top spin shot, you're going to get a nice high launch and um, I like the way the ball grips in that string, and so it still drops way inside the lines. And with the 100D, I think I could be really creative with that. I haven't tried that setup yet, but that's one I might, you know, give a whirl and just see what I can get out of the racket with that. I did also like it um, with the uh, Polytor Drive, which mm -hmm. I've been liking that string a lot. It's just really crisp, firm playing, like just a good, trustworthy co-poly. And I feel like in any of those rackets, it really enhanced that kind of like solid, stable, consistent feel of the rackets too. So just solid, stable, consistent string with a solid, stable, consistent <laughs> racket. Yes. And you can't blame yourself, <laughs> no. you, or you can't blame yeah. the racket or the setup. You, you can only blame you yourself. Can blame yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, real quick, the Polytor Air, I think it's a round shape poly, but what I noticed like Chris is for the spin potential, the ball really uh, sits inside it, pockets really well, so you hold it just for that split mm -hmm. millisecond, and you really can grab that way, I think. That's a yeah. pretty good one to pair with the spin friendly. Yeah, yeah it's one of the softer strings that we've yeah. tested in the lab, and so you can really hold the ball yeah. and and you know get it some nice shape. Yeah. Tev, did you try anything? Did you guys, did anyone try a hybrid? I'm thinking like a Rexus hybrid could have worked, no? I did not in the, during the play test, stuck to the usual full bed of poly. I think 
uh, was something I learned from Troy. Actually, he just mentioned it was like on that 100D, I'd go with a shaped poly and I would drop the tension. We typically um, string around 53. I personally, for something with a tight pattern like that, would like to go a little lower, mm -hmm. I, like in the 48 range. And I think that would have helped me with the depth. Yeah. Just a little bit easier, yeah. Nice, agreed. Um, I'm supposed to do this. <laughs> let's <laughs> let's name a couple rackets that compare to these. So if let's say there's a listener out there, they're using the racket that Tiv used, they're using the Speed Pro or whatnot. So maybe we can go through and say like, if you're using one of these rackets, maybe a demo on this one, this percept would be good. So let's start with the 100D, since that's the new kid on the block. What rackets would you compare to the 100D? So definitely the Speed Pro TIFFS 100P would be another one. Um, what else maybe is it? The, um, well, you know, it's not here in the States any longer, but maybe that Gravity Tour, if you used oh, yeah. that in the past. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. Or, yeah, Strike 1820 kind of player. Yeah. Looking to maybe take away a little bit of the Christmas and the pop of a Strike. And if you're looking for a little bit more control, that would be a, a way to go. Yeah, or even like that Strike 100 player that mm -hmm. wants a little more control and comfort. Mm -hmm. I think that would be a good step in the direction with the D. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then what about the Percept 100? Again, that Pure Strike 100, um, V-Core Pro 100. <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, maybe a Blade uh, 100? 100, yeah, yeah. The new V8, right? The V8. Yeah, V7. And, or the V7, I really loved. I was on the play test of the V7, really loved that racket. Yeah. Gravity Tool, maybe? Someone like, or MP kind of? Yeah, player. Gravity MP mm -hmm. would be a nice, another pretty comparable frame, I think. I'm sure there's a couple others out there, but those are all or really... Or maybe even, sorry, catch you no, off no, there. No, I was just thinking the text stream, the, the 290. It's a, I mean, oh, that yeah. one's a, um, Perfect, a yeah. little lighter, but mm -hmm. it's another lighter weight control 100. The Dunlop CX line is oh, not yeah. well to away yes. from this either. Those are really smooth control-oriented rackets, so you can jump between those two lines i think pretty easily nice yeah. yeah i would say that with the 100 yeah 200 or 400 yeah yeah and those are the red ones right yeah yep <laughs> it gets confusing with the, all the x's <laughs> yeah. and the numbers yeah, yeah um what about the percept 97 i hit that one uh well i started out hitting stock and then i customized it yeah how but, did you customize it um beefed up the swing weight a good amount of points. I think the one I started with was right around 315, so I yeah. added about 15 swing weight points, mostly at 12, mm -hmm. um, and then leather gripped it. So that's about as far as I got so far. I did the, uh, I, like in one of the videos, I wrapped it kind of like the stand the man with the leather grip on there. Uh, <laughs> but I customized that and the newer uh, Wilson Ultra Pro 1619, and I would say those, those are in the same ballpark. Different feels, yeah. but both uh, 97, uh, 1619, fairly flat, thin beam. So that's one that first came to mind mm -hmm. just because I've been hitting those so much together. Um, so the 97, I'd have to look at the Pro Stuff. That's right, yeah. yeah uh, <laughs> I think the Pro Stuff is a little bit livelier response from so. the string bed. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a difference. I mean, we get a little bit more heat on the serve out of the Pro Stuff, a little bit more consistency out of the Percept. Um, and then I'd also throw in the uh, the TF40. If you go with the open pattern or if you went with the closed pattern, then you're looking back at the 100D. Um, and then also for the 100D, because I want to jump back there again, uh, if you're a Blade 98 player, um, I think, you know, and you're using the 18 main blade, the 100D would kind of be a good one to try against it too. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, how about you, Michelle? Because <laughs> I mean, the H isn't worlds the away H. from the no, RF. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for sure. Obviously, I, I think in my comments, I said that those are the most comparable in weight and swing weight, um, for sure. Uh, pro staff, that's what we were kind of, Troy and I were discussing this earlier. It's interesting to see the questions that we're getting from some of the people wa that watch our YouTube channel, because there's a lot of different racket families that kind of blend into th what the Percept offers between the Pro Staff, the Blade. I've never really been a Blade person, but I like that stiffer feeling Pro Staff. So I feel like the Percept's just a little bit softer than a Pro Staff. Is the beam a little thinner on the Percept versus the Pro Staff? I think it is. I think, maybe, what's, it, uh, what's the Pro Staff, 21 and a half? I think, yeah. And I think these are 
21 now, the 97s? I think. And they used to be, what, 20 before they made the change to the last? Okay. Gen- they went up like a half a millimeter. They're pretty close, yeah. So you, f- I can feel the stiffness in, in like a little bit of a thicker and just a different material. The yeah. RA feels like, on the pro stuff, so it feels like you're going up like a couple of RA points, right? Just so you sure. get that yeah. little bit firmer, crisper response, mm-hmm. and then with the perceps, it's... A softer, softer all sits there, all, yeah, all <laughs> yeah. sits on the bracket a little longer. The H, yeah, it's definitely more plush. Mm-hmm. But we were also talking this morning about some of the prestiges that line up, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, going back to, sorry, going back to the 97, did we talk about the com- comparable rackets to the 97D yet? No. Oh, okay. Let's that that <laughs> one, to me, is very, even with the last generation and the last generation of the head prestige, but the the 1820 prestige, the pro, mm-hmm. And the 97D are very similar rackets to me. I think because the beam is a little thinner on the Prestige Pro, so it does give me that little bit even softer feel yeah. and like <laughs> even more like it's a beautiful feeling racket. Whereas I think the Percept is too, but the Percept 97D is a little more forgiving, more a modern, little, a little bit more pop, a little bit easier energy return more push push through the court with the 97d yeah the whereas prestige. with the prestige pro you really got to bring some racket head speed to get the ball to go through the court <laughs> yeah i'm thinking like a guy like chillich or someone you know that's <laughs> yeah. just like that, and that's like becoming non-existent well i don't know it's just a lot of work <laughs> right <laughs> we were yeah. just talking um i'm also finding that prestige is a little string sensitive but i did not find the percepts to be super string sensitive i but I can understand. Yeah. But that's just Other fine. than spin potential, which you're not, not usually worried about. That, worried yeah. about <laughs> the the 97D is very for, uh, more forgiving, I think, than the Prestige more forgi- Pro. Oh, yes, I would and, agree. Uh, yeah, I think it's just a little easier to use. I can shape the ball better with, I keep talking about shape, but I can shape the ball better with <laughs> the Prestige Pro. And I think it's because I have to carry the added racket head speed with that racket. I have to work a little bit harder. Yes. But I get the ball to dip and you know, and kick and do things. Whereas I got so much push off the racket with a 97 D that the ball was just going through the corner. Like I said, I was just hitting straight lines all the time as opposed to trying to carve angles just because the racket just seemed to want to really push through the ball and send it deep and get it to jump off the court. Whereas with a prestige pro, I feel like I can whip the angle or if I want to go deep and straight, then I have to look really drive through it and add that kind of mass myself. Yeah, that slightly thinner beam on the Prestige and maybe just a little bit lower swing weight really makes it feel like you can manipulate it. Even though it's still a beefy racket, mm-hmm. comparing the two, it's, e- it's easier to whip and carve and mm-hmm. do that that dirty, crafty stuff Chris likes to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, speaking of different rackets, not that we need to add another one into the Percept lineup, but there is one that's available in Europe that we are not getting in the US, is that correct? There's, I know there's one in Japan in the domestic market that isn't, it's like a 104, I wanna say, because I was watching some of the early reviews that came out, I was trying to have um, YouTube do its best translation <laughs> <on that. laughs> yeah. with the subtitles. Um, yeah, so there is a, a more forgiving kind of more. So um, like a Blade 104? Kind yeah, of? Kind, yeah. Of that yeah. kind of offering. Um, in Japan that we are not getting. And is it and extended at all? Don't know. That could be fun though. Yeah. Cause I mean, that's what I was gonna yeah. lead into. If you could extend one, since we have V cores that are extended and E zones that are extended and Troy, I don't know what your current racket of choice is. We should go over the other ones right now. <laughs> I don't but. think I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know at one point it was an extended Yonex. Which percept would you extend? I would, uh, I know I said the V core, uh, sorry, the, the percept 100 was my favorite, but I think if we an extended, I'm gonna, Go with the 100D. I mean, because you're gonna, I'm gonna get that extra leverage, and usually translates into more easy power. So I think that tighter pattern would control that. And I'm always looking for that slightly more control. But hey, I need help in the power department too, and that could be that could be it. I think like if you could sit down with like some of the racket engineers and kind of like have your own custom like you know pro stock or whatever. I would like to try one of the 97s. I think the 97D would be cool. The 1820 pattern with an extended. 
but they, I think they would have to figure out a way to shift the balance on it because you couldn't just take that racket in stock form and throw a half inch extender on it because the swing would be crazy. It'd be like yeah. 350 and it's already beefy. That would be a lot. I mean, I'm sure there's some pros out there that can handle it, but um, so in, if you were just going to like throw a half inch on any of the rackets and leave them in stock, um, I think the 100D would be perfect. Um, that'd be really cool. Or I mean, even the 97 310 might be fun. But, um, yeah, I mean, you'd have to get, figure out the way they're going to re- rebalance the racket if they were to do it on one of the heavier ones. And Yonex, would, they're the kind of company that would do that. Yeah. Um, because each one is treated so specially. You know, back in the day, different grip sizes from Yonex used to have different weight and balances. Mm. Um, and so you would have light, light, super light kind of things going on depending on the grip size you got. This is going back to like really old classic early graphite rackets mm. etc um but yeah they would definitely tweak a lot of things on the racket if they extended it for me i think like tiff the 100d would be a fun one to do i've hit some test rackets from another brand we kind of alluded to earlier that they did a plus length version of a mid plus length racket and a mid plus head size racket and uh, with a denser string pattern and it played really nicely and Still working on see if we can get that one to come to market, um, and I think the, there's a lot of potential for that 100D. I like the added length on the back end slice; really allows <laughs> you to just flick it. You know, like you can go hold the shot and then go down the line or cross court with just a flick of the wrist at the end. And um, you, I mean, you can do that with a standard length racket, but you just get a bit more juice on it with the longer racket. Nice, and that's a good reminder. You're talking about the quality. It, to all of our listeners to go check out all the videos that you have to do in Japan and show all the amazing like quality craftsmanship that they take in making their rackets and they're one of the few that manufacture in Japan. Yeah, so they're the only company that's making their own rackets. Everyone else is using an outside factory, but they have their own factories in Japan and um, they are fanatical about quality <laughs> control. It's amazing to see. and. The amount of checks, everything is checked. You know, the decals, the paint, the way the racket's gripped, the way it's packaged, everything is checked several times. And, you know, and I think when we, you know, we measure a lot of specs here and we find Yonex tend to be the tightest spec tolerance, so. Nice. Um, To talk a little bit more about Yonex rackets, I kind of wanted to throw out the V-Core and the E-Zone families and compare how the Percept fits in because we obviously are very in it and we know which which racket like kind of offers us more power, more spin, but a lot of people just see, okay, that's the minty green one, that's the blue one, that's the red one, and there's been a lot of questions to comparing. So what would you guys say, I mean, E-Zone versus V-Core versus Percept, who should be looking at an E-Zone racket. Because E-Zone's my favorite line, and I know also Britt uses the E-Zone mm-hmm. 100 as her racket of choice. Mm-hmm. Both of us previously have used Pure Drive, so we're, it's very like easy power, easy stability, easy spin for that like all-court player that looks to dictate, but also, you know, like you might be a defender, you might be an aggressor. Like it's not, it's kind of like a big open playground for anyone that's looking for a little bit of everything. Right, yeah. they even yeah. had that slogan we talked about, the easy one. Yeah, yeah. that's oh, kind of how they market exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. And but. for me, I just like the feel too. It's very big, sweet spot. Like, even if I miss hit it, it doesn't feel harsh. So that's where I'm at with the E Zone. What about like a V Core? I would say the V Core is similar to the E Zone in that it's just super easy playability. Mm-hmm. I think maybe even more slightly uh, for me. The, the, more power, more spin, I guess, it, and the feels are slightly different. Mm-hmm. But I think that it also is like the E zone in that it's like it is a racket that just is easy to play with, and it it fits at least on the 100 side. I'm not usually testing like the 95. I know there's that 95. That's the outlier. Yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, that that's what I I kind of maybe a little bit more spin oriented for the yeah. Thing. Yeah, I think for Vico for me it's kind of getting towards like a radical Mm -hmm. or if you go extreme tour that kind of player um whereas e-zone is is definitely more um you know pure drive kind of like but with a different feel obviously and the head shapes are even slightly different yeah Mm -hmm. the new the new head shape on the v cores because the v core 
I mean, if you break it down, their their main focus is spin. Yeah, you know, it's not. Uh, it's it's really hard to distinguish sometimes power level differences between E Zone and V Core because mm-hmm. they both pack a good punch, but the one thing that they're really striving for is spin, and that goes mostly with the string spacing. So the string spacing is more, so slightly more spread apart than the E Zone, where mm-hmm. the E Zone in the same head size racket usually is the string spacing is just a little tighter even if it's the same 16 by 19 pattern or whatever right. um but the head shape plays a part in that that spin potential with the v core so it's it's almost got this what i call like a bulbous look to it like a light bulb you know it kind of narrows and then opens up towards the hitting zone up at mm-hmm. the top the modern player is hitting you know contact point mid to upper part of the hoop and that's where it's widest to give you what chris introduced me to a long time ago didn't really know the term the spin window you know it gives you that wider spin window so you can aggressively mm. get that mm. low to high a brush on the ball i'm thinking of like nishioka's forehand you know mm. and you'll see that also in rackets like the boom and the gravities they all kind of have that 10 and 2 o'clock kind of extension Wire. of the yeah of the the string bed mm-hmm. and then the percepts kind of as a general more controlled more lower powered but Control also and feel, some, baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh, feel. Feel would be a big yeah. one. So, yeah. you know, the blade player, the prestige player, the more, the player, you know, the CX200 player, the players looking mm-hmm. for that connection to the ball, a lot of control, looking to supply their own power. That's, you know, um, I think the Percept player, except Percept, I feel like is a, a little bit more forgiving than a lot of those other brands. Yeah. The other one, I, we when we were talking about comparable rackets, to piggyback off what Chris just said, but for the H, the heavier one, another one I'd mention is the Vocal C10 Pro. Oh. Yeah, that mm-hmm. thin, soft. I know, I was trying to rack my brain for pattern. another comparable in that category. And I'm... Yeah. There's a... One of the Procanex rackets can get pretty beefy too. Is mm. it the like KIQ Plus? Something. Yeah. It's, a yeah. three, it's a 325, mm-hmm. the heavier one. Yeah. yeah that yeah. would be another 97H comparable frame. Okay. Well, that's. We've spent a lot of time <laughs> chatting about this, as always. It's good to be back and having these discussions. I would love to hear what everyone wants to hear from us now that we're in studio. But to wrap things up, we're just going to do a quick gear check to see where you guys are at since we haven't really checked in on that lately. So, Tiffany, what's your current racket of choice? String of choice, and let's go even shoe of choice. Ooh, shoe of choice. We'll start there. We just wrapped it up. I'm wearing, and my favorite shoe right now is the Lacoste Ultra. I'm going to mess up the number you got section. Those. So I think it's like <laughs> AGLT23 yeah. uh, Ultra. Loving that shoe. Uh, my racket, is, and I just updated to the ATS TechStream Tour 100P. I had been using the 2015 version up until last year and currently just have a full bed of ALU. Any of the fancy new colors? No, the standard <laughs> one, two, five. Oh, gee. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I asked uh, Troy strung it for me. <laughs> what did we string it at? 50, 50 or 48? Yeah. I think we strung it at 50. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I lose a good feeling straight. <laughs> um, Where you at, Troy? What's oh, I don't even know. Gear no. of choice. Let's go with shoes. Shoes easy. Shoes are easy. Probably the two I grab the most frequent and just good comfort overall and I trust in them is the Cord FF3, the Novak, and the Vapor 11. Okay. I like both of those. Cybersonics, I like that one too, but those are probably my two favorites. If I can get some more GP turbos somewhere, uh, I, that's maybe, another uh, one. They just came out with the Bodega ones. I Did know. they all sell those, out? Those Naomi <laughs> colors are crazy. Because they're cool. Yeah. Um, rackets, oh, that's a that's a sticky situation. Uh, <laughs> it's a tough one. But um, I've mostly been hitting the Ultra Pro 1619 customized, the Percepts I hit with a bunch of all three of the 97s, but I've been gradually settling on the H. So the H or the Ultra Pro. And then I still hit the Technofibers a lot, both TF40 and T-Fight 315s. Um, but then I also go back to the wide, the wide out extended 1820. So <laughs> there's a lot of records. Troy's <laughs> sure got a big ton of swag. <laughs> yeah, they're all good. Um, String? But, and then Yon- Yonex string? also the V-Core 95 customized. That's a nice one. Uh, um, <laughs> string, usually Hyper G. Uh, 16L or 16, uh, Lynx Tour, um, I like Alu Power. Alu Power's nice. I just have to restring that one more because I feel like it, after a certain amount of time, it kind of bags out. And then um, some of the Yonex stuff has kind of grown on me. I like Polytor Pro, but not if I'm looking for that extra bite. If I'm looking for that extra bite, I'm going Poly Drive or um, 
I actually like the spin. The, it doesn't get talked about a lot, but the Poly Tour spin is mm-hmm. nice, firm, sharp. You know, that's what I like in a Poly. So, yeah, you know, when I test because I hit them all side by side, and when I tested that spin string, everything went short because I was getting so much <laughs> spin. Just like, <laughs> yeah, it was just dipping right over the net, um, and so. You know, after you get a few balls, you make everyone you recalibrate. And, uh, yeah, you do get a lot of rotation on the ball out of that one. I need to try the Casper setup, which is the spin mains and the poly pro crosses. Well, and, like, I not to, to be, like, bring a material bag, but the colors that they're making their strings right now. I mean, there's, like, the minty one. There's mm-hmm. a purple. There's the mm-hmm. poly tour airs, that really cool br- blue. <laughs> so you can make some cool poly poly hybrids. Was it the Rev that was in purple? Is it Rev and Purple? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I so really like that. Same with the minty one as yeah. Rev. And then yeah. a Strike, the orangey red? No. That's also a Rev, the orange rev. one. Rev. Yeah. And then Poly Tour Pros. And the... Fire is red. Yeah. 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 See, red. there's a lot of colors. And then Strike, you can get in like a gray. dark gray and black. Yeah. Do they even do a blue Strike? I know they do a Poly Pro blue now. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of colors. There's a lot <laughs> of colors. I think the Rev even comes in a just a traditional white, doesn't it? Oh, I don't know. Okay, I haven't oh. hit it. If it does, yeah, I like a I like a plain white. They might have something. the most colors in polys. Yeah. That's kind of fun. Now you know, <laughs> Chris, Chris. What are you rocking are you out rocking, there? Man? <laughs> so when uh, I went back east because I went to New York and also went and hit with Jofie in Atlanta, which was nice. fun. Shout out, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey Jofie, hey, and uh, I could only fit one pair of tennis shoes in the bag, and it happened to be the Joe Res Nine. Love that shoe. Uh, just a I mean, I really love the eight. The nine is just a little bit better, um, but I can go between those two. I still have some eights kicking around. Um, so yeah, I really like that shoe. And then racket, I'm still on the Speed Pro, but there's some really tempting things I'm hitting that are coming out soon. Um, so might be making a switch in the near future. We'll see. <laughs> and then um, there's also a new Speed we do out next year. I hope I'm not letting the cat out of the bag on that one <laughs> but um yeah, there'll be some speeds coming out next year and then you're always hitting good with the pure 98 <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, you know just to say i'm gonna touch wood here but i am undefeated with that racket oh. <laughs> in ground stroke games at least yeah i just like breakers and stuff so i've only been hitting with you know like the under 12 beginners but <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah i've been playing really well with that racket too um did I just hear that Chris feed Jofi in a, in a ground game with the Arrow 98? Just I didn't saying. have that with me. I was oh. <laughs> <laughs> Stir um, the pot. <laughs> wait, I did get to play some Dingo as well as out there. That was fun. Um, and then um, String, uh, Polytor Drive. Love it. Yeah, it's a great price, great playing String. Yeah, that's an easy one. Mm-hmm. Did you go shoot? You, oh, you went with uh, yeah. Gel Res. Huh? Yeah. And how about you, Michelle? I'll go over mine real quick. I'm cut caught between the gel res 9 and the lacoste shoes i've been wearing the gel res 9 actually the men's more than anything lately um they're just so comfortable and they just do everything right but the lacoste shoes we all loved them like everyone on the test loved it um rackets i have not switched away from the rf 97 however (laughs) i do have some extended length rackets from selenko that i've been hitting a lot the 1619 X- XTD, and then there's another one that's a little more extended that I've been playing around with that's been just super fun. Um, it's beefy, and if you ever played with a 28-inch racket, it's everything you remember, but it's hard to wield if you're hitting <laughs> against a big hitter. So um, as far as strings, I'm actually... Oh, re- oh, oh sorry, I was going to say rackets. You also hit with the Radical Pro pretty well. I've been hit, I know, yeah. like... <laughs> It's fun when we're testing rackets from a brand and then we kind of remember the other rackets we like from that brand. So I actually tested Poly Tour Air with the Radical, trying to do the soft string with the firmer racket, and that worked out quite well. So um, that was good. And string, I'm I'm enjoying Lux Eco Power, which is kind of a cool story, but I am finding it to not fit in every racket as well it does some rackets are a little string sensitive and i didn't like it in a racket yesterday but um i really like that one and yeah that's about it yeah speaking of the eco um i was stringing at a local tournament this past weekend and a guy was using that in the crosses with 4g in the main so. oh man Ooh, that's a crispy set yeah, yeah, so he he does about 4G what the, racket uh the serena <laughs> Okay, Mark Boone, stop. <laughs> with, with, with weight on it. No. 
<laughs> yeah, he's a good player. He's like been been on doing futures and challenges stuff like that for a long time. But wow, um, yeah, he does the four G because the tension maintenance like it lasts him match after match. What what tension did he you say? Uh, right, around, I think. Uh, Low to mid fifties. Okay. Yeah, because it's a bigger head size. So that just reminded me. Mid fifties. Did, did you watch Ben Shelton last night? Uh, I watched a match. I heard something about his his strings getting a racket restrung. Yeah, it was pretty high. Like sixty fifty seven. Uh, fifty seven something else. Oh, it okay. wasn't as high as sixty. Fifty seven okay. was the high end. Okay, but, but he I did thought like, that was pretty high. Um, two tensions, right? Like mm-hmm, two the tensions. Head. I think it was like maybe yeah. The other one was much lower, but fifty seven yeah. was on the high. Even James Blake was like. Because James, oh, James Blake, Blake used, used I've hit some of his rackets, and uh, that strung pretty tightly. <laughs> yeah. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah. yeah. yeah but it was fun. Well, okay, that wraps this episode up. More to come from us next time. Thank you guys for joining, and as always, happy hitting.